All right, here's a quick tutorial on making a, a round phone holder for uh, any kind of like smartphone, things like that. And so what we're going to start with is to create a circle. You could actually do this with any shape you wanted to, but uh, I'm going to use a circle. The first thing I do is uh, find that circle tool, or it's in the menu with the rectangle. It usually shows like that. You can click on circle, or you can press C, the letter C. Before you start placing your circle, notice in the bottom right hand corner it shows the number of sides you're working with. Yours should say 24. If you want your circle to be more smooth, before you click just type in a number like uh, 48 and hit enter. And it will show up down here and give you a more smooth looking uh, circle. Have more sides essentially and that makes it look more smooth. So I'm going to click on the origin as a place to start drag along the red line and a good dimension is about 30 millimeters so I'm type in 30. This is assuming that you opened up your SketchUp um, model here with millimeters as your chosen size. If not you can choose the circle with the eye inside to choose millimeters there. I can show that real quick. Down at the bottom here you can see millimeters. I would click on that and maybe give it two decimal places and then push this back out of the way. Alright so I've got a circle uh, I'm going to pop this up about 12 millimeters. So again, the radius of the circle was 30, and I'm going to go up 12 here. You can go up higher or lower, but this is a pretty good number. It's a pretty basic shape, and I kind of like to make it a little more stylized, a little bit round on the side, and that's kind of an easy way to do. We can use the tool from last time, the Follow Me tool. So let's just get that available first. Um, Oh yeah, I did to use the push-pull tool there, so that's the letter P, or you can use the push-pull tool from this middle menu right here to pull it up. All right, next. I would like to add an arc to the side. it will make it look kind of stylized, and so what I'm going to do is press A for arc. You can see my tool has changed. Uh, I'm going to click on where the red line meets the model and go straight up and click at the top. And then I'm going to go along this red line outwards, and I can push the right arrow to force that or just make sure I can visually see it's on the red line. You can decide how much you want the side to look. I kind of like it at a lower profile. It looks a little bit better in my opinion. And I just click and then if I use my select tool you can see that if I click on that it is a surface but it's not a fully defined surface for the use of our um, follow me tool. So I need to click with the line tool so that's pressing the letter L to get to this pencil. I'll click on the top point and the bottom point and that gives me a nice solid surface there. The next step then is to use the select tool, click on this surface, click follow me, click on the other surface and I get a rounded looking shape. So this is kind of handy, this looks pretty good for our, um, what is this going to be, a phone holder I guess. Alright, next thing to do. we're gonna select the whole thing. So you can use a box select and select the whole thing. Or you could triple click it, one, two, three, and you get a select that looks like this. In any case, you're going to have the whole thing selected. And then just right click and make it a component. Don't care about the name. Hit OK. And I'm just going to double check that this thing's nice and solid. So I'm going to go over here to the bottom item on the right. It says Solid Inspector. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to scroll down and see that it shows errors, but nothing that is nothing that says fix me, so that should be okay. So I can just stop the inspection. I could run it again if I want, but I don't see anything that tells me I need to be fixed. It just says short edges, so it should be okay. All right, next, we need to import uh, a model that I've created that will help give us a slot for our phone. And so in the three blocks, it looks like a uh, uh, something you played with as a kid. You can click on that. We're going to type it up in the search on the warehouse AVS phone and hit enter. And we'll see there's an AVS phone and it's got my name on it, so that's obvious hopefully. Click on that, just bring it in. And we're just going to place it somewhere on our model for now, but we're going to re we're going to move it around a bit here. So I've clicked and placed it, but notice it's going to cut the bottom right off, and I don't want that. So I want you to practice moving using the arrow keys here. And so I want to click on the model anywhere, just on the side's fine. Press the up arrow key, and that's going to force it to only go up and down. Even if I move my mouse sideways, it still only goes up and down. 
And so I'm going to zoom in and rotate and look at the bottom here. And I want it to have just a little bit of space between the bottom of the model on this back edge and the bottom of the model. So that's where I want to be. And then the key here is this back line shouldn't be past this back edge. So really you can put it wherever you think is a good spot. Whether you want it right up to the front, you can use the arrow key, the left arrow. You can put it right up to the front or all the way to the back. But if I did this, check what happens. I go past this back edge and if I have a big phone, it'll actually just tip over. So the key here, using the left arrow to force direction, is just to slide that somewhere near the front, middle front. And that's where I want to be. All right, next step. I'm going to want to move this. So this thing actually is a nested group. doesn't really matter too much, but here's what you need to do. You need to right click on it. When it's selected blue like this, right click on it and just hit explode. Notice how the blue lines now are nicely close to the model itself. Now we just have a single group rather than a nested group. The other one had one inside of it. And so then my next step here is to use what we call the subtraction tool. So I'm going to go, uh, you can either have that selected or not, but I'll just click on the green space. Head to the menu below the push pull or the follow me tool. The third item in has kind of a white space there with a darker space behind it. Click on that, that's your subtract tool. Click on the phone, you see it says number one, and then click on the other part, the base, that's number two, click again, and everything works. You're going to have a nice subtracted piece in there that your phone can now fit into on an angle. And so we could print this as it is, but it's going to use up a lot of material, and so a, fa a better way to do this is to make some empty spaces, and so here's what you can do for that. Use the select tool. We're going to double click so that we're inside the object editing it. And then I'm just going to click on this top surface and I want to use the offset tool. So over here in the push pull menu or the follow me tool is the bottom one called offset. Or you can push the letter F. Go to that surface, click once, drag inwards, type in two for two millimeters and hit enter. That's pretty good. Let's do the same over here on this side. Drag inwards, type in two for two millimeters. And then let's just push-pull these down. So that's that push-pull, the letter P, or using the menu over here. Drag to the bottom. So this is an important place to use click, and then move, and then click again. We're going to click once. Then I'm going to hold down my middle mouse wheel, rotate to the bottom. Put my mouse on the bottom surface to tell SketchUp I want that to come all the way down to this surface. Click. And notice it makes a hole. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Click. Drag down to the bottom surface and make a hole. And so now I've got a fairly quick uh, item to print and it will give me a fairly nice looking result. And so that's what we're looking to do. Um, you can create this with any shape you want, but uh, if you want to follow this tutorial, this will give you uh, a phone holder that hopefully will be functional. All right.